Hey guys, it's Kat. So before today's episode starts, I wanted to plug my Patreon. By contributing every month, you'll get access to exclusive episodes and creative content. The funding helps me afford new equipment and a better listening experience for you. The link to that Patreon is going to be www.patreon.com slash Kat I'll leave that link in the description below, but if uninterested, enjoy today's episode. Bye! Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. Hey guys! Welcome to Brain Food. This is episode five of season three. I'm here with Elise. Hi. <laughs> um, but you wouldn't know that because we recorded the other day and we had to re-record it because <laughs> we're both really tired right now and we're pretty burned out. You're probably more burned out than I am. I'm, I'm you know what? I'm doing all right. It was nice to go to the countryside in Connecticut for a little while. And, and Trish is in the corner over here. Hi, Trish. You can yell as loud as you can. Yes. Yeah, Trisha's over here. <laughs> Trisha's over there. And um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about bipolar. Um, I don't want to be an old record and repeat myself, but... We can we can just... We can just go straight into it. We can talk about anything. Garrett, you could... I could pull down my pants. We talk... I was oh. going to say, you could... You could <laughs> All right, let's just... Question. Let's talk about what we did that day. Like, we, we went and saw Noel Miller... Oh yeah, he was great. He was so he good. He was so. Oh, we met Cash. That was that was nice. You were there, right? I met a. Oh yeah, I was there. Oh, I was nice. at, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a lot smaller I than I. Like, <laughs> were you there? You were like <laughs> fucked up on like shrooms or something. You were like, wait. No, it was so funny. Those two girls in front of us like did not enjoy that we were enjoying ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> that fucking girl. There's some girl in front of me. She had that curly hair, right? Yeah, these she like two white people. White girls, sorry. I'm not white. I can say this. <laughs> what if you're like I am white? <laughs> <laughs> Trisha's white as fuck. She's from West Virginia. And she calls me white woman all the time when I don't when she doesn't get her way. She yeah. goes, "Hey white woman." I love and she goes, "I want to kiss you on the mouth." Cracker on cracker crime. It's so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no that girl in front of us we i was like ah, like laughing because i was having fun yeah, and she like turned her head a bunch of times i saw her talking a lot of crap to the girl next to her but it was just funny because it was like i had noticed the whole time even karan said it like they were not laughing like they were just kind of like like staring at the stage I was this like, is ableist <laughs> the whole time there were so many vulgar jokes that were happening but it was who it was cares so good. it was so well. funny it you was no his opener i didn't know how i wanted to feel about him like it was kind of sean gardini he was like really like the kind of guy who's like yeah i went to the i went to the store today and then i shot up everyone yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was kind of like i liked it though because like you said it was like a slow burn kind yeah, of comedy like and his monotone voice really worked for like the 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 set that he had i really liked him yeah no he was a good opener because noel was like what the fuck is up people like i was just like no he was <laughs> good though. the complete opposite in terms of energy and i got to like see your boyfriend and we were we did good <laughs> we see your partner sorry i see your i don't know um, your, he's uh, a thing <laughs> yeah we saw i saw her friend that's better um that was good and we waited outside for Noel, and he never showed up. I don't think he ever showed up. I don't think so either. They they brought like two containers of beer, so. And was... then we got Popeyes, which I haven't had in three years. Mm, that was buzzing. It was buzzing as fuck. And then this morning, I'm like so scared for this email thing. Like I'm like I'm like a mass open. You know, like when you're in high school, you're like mass. Yeah. Keep you keep checking. I think everything will be. F- I think it'll all be fine. I think it's just going to come in probably in April. Like, yeah. the first week of April, hopefully. But I think, you know. They're edging I'll, me. <laughs> like, they're literally, like, I'll edging edge me. You. Wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, you know, we'll have a celebration dinner soon. I think so, too. So. And I'm going to see you on Easter. Yay. <laughs> I told my dad I wasn't going home, and he got really upset, and I felt really bad. Because I saw my whole family, and they know. But I didn't tell my dad. Stop trying to finger me. Hey, <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so today we're going to talk about bipolar. We. We. We don't know if you have bipolar. <laughs> we don't know. You I don't know, but... I don't really want to find out. If I'm going to be honest, I don't think you do. I hope not. I really don't think you do. You don't come off as, like, chaotic, like, manic, or super depressed. No, I don't think. But you have a parent who does. Yes. Your yeah. mommy. My mommy. Your mommy. <laughs> She's really built diff. How is she doing? So much better. So much better. New yeah, meds. Yeah. New meds. Weed. New life. You know. It's new job. New job. <gasps> no cheating boyfriend. You know. 
all good things. So much fun. She's doing so much better. Oh my god. <laughs> We're actually getting along. I wanted to ask you this last week. I was like, what's your favorite memory with your mom at any point in your life? Oh, that's a good question. Um, because then it unlocks a bunch of other doors. Okay, I don't know how lame this is to say, but like recently all of my memories of her are very fond so like it's hard to choose Aww. one stop really <laughs> yeah like recently like as like, it, like she's, this year like she year. got on my nerves this weekend but like honestly like i would say anytime we do anything together it's i just feel like i'm with like my best friend so it, everything is great <laughs> trisha's throwing a fit over there she's so happy <laughs> she's levitating uh, <laughs> but I, d- I do love like I think there was one day I was like sick in um, elementary school and I stayed home and I really wasn't feeling well I was like crying and throwing up for like days straight I think it was the flu and we just stayed home and watched all of the Lord of the Rings movies together mm-hmm. and that was great okay <laughs> like Aww. we binged it in, like I think like a few days it was it was an experience um but yeah, I think we watch a lot of movies together on DVD and VHS when we were broke. And I, <laughs> I would be sick. <laughs> Stop. Okay, so every 10 minutes I have to do an ad reel. Just to like, so we're going to pause it right here, do an intermission. I'm just going to check this out and see if everything's good. And then we're going to burp. But anyway. <laughs> I think uh-huh. I was going to throw up. Okay, we're back. Oh. We're back. I just needed to check if that was good. Because like, imagine we talked for fucking 40 minutes and it was just like, womp. <laughs> <laughs> that would <Trish>. happen <laughs> it would happen no but no i think that like when i met your mom at least she seems like a very great person when when she's great like i think i see a lot of growth in her and i yeah. feel like she's seen a lot as a person in her she life she honestly like i feel like if she wasn't as crazy as she is i probably would have turned out insane um because like she has like horror stories of like when she would have like breakdowns when she was young and she would run away from home like she jumped out like our former three-story house that we had like in the bronx she like jumped out the window and almost like broke her legs and would run away to times square and back then it was like a lot of prostitutes and drug dealers just not safe yeah times square was horrible and so she would just run away there like almost got sold by people and like beat up and robbed i think that's why like i see that in her because like she doesn't seem like this overly happy like i like she seems like she's that way because she's tough yeah also my mom like she was she had like two brothers she's the only girl oh i didn't know that yeah in our house like we had like so my grandfather had all his siblings in the house and their kids so it was like a big ass house with a lot of people so it was like it was like almost like a foster home kind of vibe yeah (laughs) even when i was growing up until up until i was like six i lived there with them really yeah but then they sold the house and broke it down into a parking lot does it smell like feet in here? I think it's my feet. No, I think it's mine. I've all right, been well, traveling like all day. Here. Yeah, me too. I'm sorry. Is it mine? It's definitely my feet because, I, bro, <laughs> some ladies. Them? No, don't. <laughs> no, like for real. Like I have an ace bandage wrapped around my toe right now with like four things of gauze. Are you okay? Did my poster <laughs> fall? <laughs> Body acne. It's your feet. Oh my God. Ew. What the fuck? No, I'm just kidding. I no. like your toes. <laughs> i can see the shape very nicely oh my god she's got such an <laughs> angular like i want to she does mm. <laughs> sorry <laughs> no but i was i was gonna ask you like how was your how was how did your weekend go um it went actually pre- well my grandparents are here you know and in my small ass home um and basically i was just kind of bullied into like going to new jersey coming back the same day going to connecticut immediately when i woke up and then coming back it's a little bit brutal travel wise but other than that it was really fun Aww. yeah but like you saw your little who's that little boy you always sent me who is that is that your brother rubber <laughs> is that your brother <laughs> that's my cousin oh that's your little baby cousin. my, my brother's 10 oh, i'd be, I'd be wearing his shoes and his clothes <laughs> <laughs> he's the one that likes the basketballs he likes he, his he loves balls all types he of goes balls. he goes he goes and he goes all of them yes <laughs> and he goes <laughs> all the time <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, my day today, I don't know what the fuck happened last night where I'm so tired like this, but oh, I'm didn't not. Did you go out with your family? 
we went to the Met yesterday, mm. and that was with Pop Pop. That was crazy. Why? Because he's eighty years old, and he did not like walk in. And we were walking all around the Met yesterday. Why would you he was guys getting do frustrated that? because Sarah's never been before. And they, I met them in Little Italy. They went to the fucking goddamn coin show. Oh, okay. <laughs> they collect coins. Such a white person thing. <laughs> oh, I got a buffalo nickel. I know like, a lot of imagine? Dominicans who do that. <laughs> They're in the military. Though. And how are they? Oh, cheaters and liars. Mm. Well, that's just Dominican oh. men, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to hold back. No, we can, we can, back. no, but it was the fact that Aiden was here and he has like that kind of humor where he's like, let him cook. And we were trying to make him laugh. I can't stand the let him cook meme. I'm so sorry. And he'll be sending I don't know like, if anyone likes it, but I don't. I don't think it's funny. I think it's funny when you're making fun of somebody who says that. Yeah. I don't even like, think it's funny then. It sounds stupid. Sorry. Yeah, Pisces 5'5 five, five, little man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love you, Aiden. Do you think he'll watch this? He watched the last one. And if you're in it, he'll watch it. His oh friends. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. God. If I did one with Trisha next week, he'd watch it, too, I think. He would. Trisha and me go do an episode real soon. She's pushing her boobies together. And um, she's... Take, Ooh, put your clothes I back like on. I like that little jiggle that it did And it after. went... The recoil. It went... Ooh, yes. It went... It. Remember that video of Billie Eilish? <laughs> and everyone was like, the recoil, damn. Oh, yeah. Don't remember that. <laughs> Everyone was shocked by her bazonga. She, hide, she hides it. <laughs> she does, because they're huge. She probably, I mean, she did it for good, <laughs> for good reason. Um, probably didn't want, like, you know how people make eye contact, like. Oh, my boss? That uh, was crazy. Mm. He's fired now, but that, like, sometimes he would look at me and be like, so how's your day today? And I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Can we talk about why older men in the workplace just have such Makes a me horny? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I you, mean, me too, but <laughs> <laughs> like, well, how come, what is up with like it's them matching our energy? I think the problem is why do they match our energy? It's fine for us to like have crushes on them, but they should not see, reciprocate those feelings. See, I don't like this conversation because I know I'm wrong. And every person I have this conversation with, they say that like, it's a, it's okay. Mm. Bless you. It, it, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so dainty and little and I just, my name. I stole your joke. I'm sorry. I love you, Trisha. It's because she's here. Her energy is seeping into you. We should get coffee after this, and I pay for everything. I'll kill you. Okay. We're going, though. Okay. But, yeah. So, let's talk about your mom. Mm-hmm. Because we're pretty chill now. We're into it. So, I have BPD, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I take meds for it. I have therapy for it. Not, like, meds for it, but, like, anxiety. They, like, help the BPD. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty scared that if I go to the doc, they're going to be, like, bipolar and I'm pretty scared about it. But have you had a, obviously you've had a hard time dealing with that with a parent, but you have seen such a drastic change. Like, is there like for people who struggle with bipolar, do you think like, yes, there is a great possibility that like you can live a happy life with that disorder? Of course. Yeah. Um, I think what it is, is obviously there's different severities and how bad it can be, but at least in the people I've experienced in my life, um, there's always a way to get help whether it be from family friends or if it's medical help because I think my mom was pushed to the point like obviously she didn't really seek help for a while um Asian parents don't really believe in mental health issues so she kind of suppressed that for a long time um and then she just had to raise me like at 20 years old so there she feels I, I feel like she didn't have she feels like the she didn't have time to take care of herself yet to yeah. address those feelings um but when she finally did it's only because she was pushed to that point where something so drastic had happened that like she it was like literally like forced into it yeah at that point because that's what my experience people. was like I, I mean my parents were pretty aware that like I'm also just a very emotional person, like emotionally sensitive, especially when I was. A- See, you do that look and I start to get scared. Why? You go like this. I don't mean to. I'm just looking You're you looking up and me. down. <laughs> <laughs> and then is it cold in here? I'm sweating. No. <laughs> Balls. You are, are you? <laughs> yeah, but this is because I'm wearing a thermal shirt. Thermal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but yeah. So I think my extremes are so high and so low, but they were really quick. It wasn't like where you have a three-month good period and three-month bad period. 
but it started to be like that once middle school started no that's like my mom when i was young too like it would be like really like r- like a huge night difference. and day within yeah. like minutes yeah in within an hour like she'd be screaming at me um and then within like 30 minutes she'd come and be like so what do you want for dinner I yeah literally because that's I, how i am i could tell that was like kind of her way of like like i don't know if she at the time i was kind of young if she knew what she was ha- what was happening really but i could tell she was kind of sorry for it a little bit but there's because that's you are your relationship with your mom is like my relationship with my sister like you love her to pieces but there are some times where you're just like i don't even know if you're sorry yeah i don't even know if i'm sorry because i just i know i love my sister but like i feel so horrible for what i've done like i literally overcompensate and keep trying to like get her to love me and she's like i don't want you to talk to me right now yeah there was a point in time i like kind of hated her and yeah like okay i don't know if you're, you could bleep this yeah um there are times i would just want to fuck kill her like just yeah to, i was like die <laughs> yeah that's how my sister feels about me and it feels so <laughs> awful because like i know i deserve it like when i was 15 like there are some things like i can't even say out loud what i used to do to her like i was abusive and manipulative like but that's just sisters being sisters. Also, time heals all wounds. And yeah. I mean, just like hopefully for you and Sarah, just like me and my mom, you know, like you can just learn to grow from those and experiences and slowly talk about them. Um, I don't know if your sister is ready for that conversation. Mm, she's 16. I think she's Probably not so then. aware, though. I think she's so aware of like what I've done to her. And I think she knows I'm sorry. I just think her own pride and like her own healing it will like just restrict that for like a really long time i don't think she's at the age where she's ready um i would say some people don't get over things like that for a while um but self-awareness can only lead to so much like of course congratulations and i'm I'm happy she's self-aware but you also have to be able to take the first step after that self-awareness you can't just stop right there yeah and she also is like misbehaving horribly now which is like around the age i started doing that not started like i was honestly i stopped doing that at 17 but like she's starting yeah now at 16 i was my, yeah i can see why my mom kind of wanted to kill me but like i, I don't know like she's also the like it, it's such like a hard game to play because she, like she's your mom but like she also has her shit to deal with so it, it's like hard to like even be mad at her but like also like fuck you you're supposed to take care of me but like oh like yeah and the thing is like i so my dad and my mother are separated obviously um obviously (laughs) (laughs) but like (laughs) um you know i thought i kind of had him for for a while as like my like uh, escape yeah like i would you know he lived three train stops away from me with my stepmom and my half brother so i was like you know i have them to rely on but then at the time my brother had kidney disease well still has it but he was like really sick um so like they kind of like in a way it feels like they forgot about me so i like just felt like stuck yeah i was like what we gonna do now because you're the <laughs> oldest also like you're supposed I'm to be the wise years one years older than him literally so it's like you're supposed to be wise yeah i can't blame them for turning their attention to him but it's like when i was going through shit with my mom and getting kicked out of the house i went to go stay with him and honestly it kind of felt like i wasn't even there yeah and i was like oh yeah like <laughs> what do i do did you ever feel like just neglected like it wasn't like to an extreme where like they weren't taking care of you but like you felt invisible yeah they were definitely taking care of me which is why i was always confused about how i felt at the time but i literally felt like i was a ghost in the house and then i just wanted to go back to my mom but she like anytime i'd go back to the house she would just like look at me and then walk away (laughs) like she did not talk to me for a while do you want to know what i did one of the things i did Mm. i we were broke at the time and I was going to a private all girls Catholic school and it was like eleven thousand per year. And my mom had no money. My dad's child support wasn't helping because it wasn't too much because my brother was sick in the hospital. So I went on a sugar daddy website. You're <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Oh <laughs> my was, god. I was trying to get those that fucking money that you probably easy did. Ass money because my mom did not allow me to work. I was not allowed to have a job. So I was like, well what the fuck else am i gonna do so tell people like why that is because i don't think a lot of people like know that because i know a lot of people who weren't allowed to get a job and it's for this reason but like it wasn't like well at least for me it's just because like in my filipino household um because my dad was fine with it but it was just her 
um, I we're not allowed to work until basically we're in college. Like my mom wasn't allowed wasn't allowed to get a job until like I think 18, 19 years old. Um, and I also was not allowed to get a job until I graduated high school just because it's like, oh, you need to stay focused on your schoolwork. But you're your not allowed to work. Your work ethic is so good that, like, I think that canceled it out. Like, I don't think that affected your work I ethic. I didn't do horribly in school. Like, there was, uh, like, I struggled in, like, chem. But well, yeah. Uh, but, like, <laughs> no one's expecting you to be a scientist <laughs> either. Fuck. I mean, I love scientists, but, like, fuck chem. Um, fuck chem. Fuck <laughs> chem. I felt that chem regions. I gotta blur that. but yeah like i just wasn't allowed to get a job so my only option i was like okay well my cousin was doing it and she was like you should try getting a sugar daddy i was like i can do that she was like you don't even have to like do anything crazy like as long as you keep them company maybe send a few photos isn't that fucked up creepy though it is (laughs) (laughs) hey 16 year old girl tell me about your day like, what do you do in the morning? I wanted emotional support. I remember there's one, this one guy who's just like, yeah, I just want someone to go to bookstores with and talk to and get coffee. And I was like, that's it? No fee? No, like they're not. <laughs> sometimes they're not even sexual. Mm-mm. Like they just need somebody to. That's so sad, though. Yeah, but obviously I was 16. So mm-hmm. my mom found out because she would. Also, I had no privacy. I had zero privacy. My mom would go through my journals. Um, oh, yeah, That's it was up. bad. Like I w- really hated her for a minute because, like, I felt like I was not allowed to be a person. Yeah, um, you're in jail, basically. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to go to friends' houses. Um, I had to be home by a certain time, which I kind of get, but like, I just, you know, like it, it wasn't the most fun. And um, I would have to, even when I would hide my journal, she would find them and read them and be like, "Why'd you say this about me?" I was like. Bitch, like, you're not even supposed to know Look this. Look where we are now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love you, mommy. <laughs> I love you, too. She, so she went through my emails back then, too. And she would, Jeez. like, yeah, she went through everything. I had zero privacy as a teenager. And um, so she saw a confirmation email. She was like, what the fuck is this? And that's when she was like, get the fuck out of my house. She kicked you Whore. out. Whore. <laughs> but, like, what is that thought process of, like, kicking you out? What is that going to do? Um... I don't oh, know. you can't make money? <laughs> Go on the streets where you can't make anything. <laughs> See how cold you get at night. But you know what was crazy? I think, okay, because I kind of like blocked this out. Um, so I, whatever, she caught me. She was like, I'm calling your dad. Um, he's coming here right now. And I don't understand why I did it. It made sense back then, but I just remember thinking my life is over. Because like, socially, I, maybe too. I, not even, just like in general, because. I already had such limited freedom and I was like, what's left to take? Like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to like breathe anymore um, or sleep in my own room. Oh yeah. That's what it was too. I like, I knew she was going to take my room away and like my phone and my iPad, like everything. So like, I felt like my whole life was just like going to crumble. Cause that's all uh, when you're a kid, like you don't have shit to fall back on except for the shit you own. I had fucking nothing. And I knew my dad was going to be fucking pissed. So, My dad gets there and I don't remember why, but he was driving me. Oh, it's because I think, yeah, she didn't want me in the house. She was like, get her out of my face. So I packed my stuff um, and then I just grabbed whatever. And then I was heading over to my dad's and um, I forget what happened, but all I know is we were driving, right? You know the train station by my house? Yeah. And then those men outside that that T-Mobile were like, hey, mama. And well, I was like. Before that was there. Okay. So it was, <laughs> it was a little quieter. Um, so we're driving. And I just remember being like, fuck, like, my life's over. What am I going to do? And then at the time, I had a friend who I was like, what if I just go to their house? And I was like, I could just do that and just, like, disappear for a little bit. So I fucking jumped out of a moving car. I did like a whole like roly poly spin into like like I was a in the Bronx too. Yeah. You probably like <laughs> went through a pothole <laughs> and went to the other side of like the world. I, was, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I thought it was fucking Kill Bill. I like literally with my brother in the car. My oh, my little brother was in a car seat and he was in the car and it was my stepmom and dad in the front and I fucking rolled out of that goddamn car and I booked it for the train i like have never ran so fast in my life but my dad's an athlete so he caught me 
I almost just said something. I took it back. No way. I said little Puerto Rican man. He went <laughs> fast. Baseball player. Got he married. was. How'd you know? <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that as a white woman, but like, it's okay. He was a little Puerto Rican softball player. <laughs> My dad is small. He's like 5'10", five 5'9". Five oh, that's tall. That's tall. <laughs> He's like Noel height. Yeah, but like, honestly, that's average height. We just shit on people because I'm Mid. huge. Sorry. <laughs> Don't say mid. That gave Aiden. He was like mid. Stop. Mid, mid I got gym that from, day. If you know that Tyler the Creator video where he's like, I hate when people say the word mid. That's why I say it more. Because <laughs> he's like, he's like, that means you guys don't have proper vocabulary. I'm like mid. He's like mid comment. He's like it's in the bag. Mid. Aiden steals his humor from fucking Twitter, bro. Like it's oh, from not Twitch, fair. Reddit, it's not 4chan. Fair. Like we all use those apps too. Don't ruin it. That out of context <laughs> sounds like he's gay. <laughs> He steals oh. his vocabulary from Twitter. Yaha. Oh. At least on my end, I show them. I don't think. Like, mm, no, like. We I shouldn't sh- talk about this. No. Okay. It's too <laughs> far. <laughs> this is too far. <laughs> we'll ignore that. But anyways, yeah. I, I, he, he, yo, my dad, he caught me with one arm. My dad was Aki then. He grabbed me like this. The Aki <laughs> way. Freak. He was Aki okay. as hell. <laughs> he grabbed me with one arm and threw me into the car. I was screaming. I was like, people thought like, how fast were you going that he like could stop the car and still fucking catch you? Because like it was, it, it's a really like my area of the Bronx is so small and that, like, like so quiet. He was and, able yeah. to just like stop the car and like because my stepmom was in the car too. I'm sure she helped him. But he was able to fucking book it to me. But the thing is, you know, I'm not athletic. I was like 15, 16. Can you imagine you're running like, <laughs> and that's literally what I was doing. I was in my pajamas and my fucking flip flops. Like, what was I going to do? What time of year is this? Um, It was during like the spring or no. Okay. Yeah, it was like like March. Oh, anniversary. Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, wait, it was. It was late February, early March that I did this. Uh, yeah. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> and, yo, I scarred my brother for life. I did. That's how I feel about my sister. Like, she's seen me do some <laughs> shit like that. And it, it it's, like, at the time, like, thinking back, like, yo, remember the time when I, like, jumped out of the car? And it's, like, oh. Uh, like, now it's, like, oh. Uh, because uh, uh, my sister, that, like, when I, I did, I did, I've done that. Um, on the way to a hospital in a cop yep. car. Yep. It's fun. Man. And I was handcuffed. Didn't get far. They <laughs> weren't just going like, fast. Me. like <laughs> no, I didn't get far. Like I literally like I, I what I did was like <laughs> I knew they didn't lock the door because I was seven. Oh. <laughs> I was seven the first time I was in a cop car and like got handcuffed and like had to go to like the mental hospital. And I didn't go again until I was 13. Like, like you're literally like, Because oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm thinking about what I was doing when I was seven. I was probably coloring. You're this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're blinking on camera. <laughs> <laughs> There's this video of Elise when she was a kid. We're like, te- no, you tell us. So I got like $300 on my birthday and my uncle was recording and he was like, bling, bling, show the money. But I didn't hear him. I thought he said bling, bling. <laughs> It's a video of me, like, dead ass staring at the camera, like. <laughs> I'm sure that's what I was doing while Kat was getting arrested. <laughs> I, I literally just, like, tumbleweeded out of the car. It's we weren't going fast. We weren't going fast. And I've done that again when I was 14 on the way to therapy. I was like, Mom, I'm not going. It was, like, the same thing with meds. Like, Mom, I'm not taking because them. Because you have that feeling of, like. What else am I'm I gonna trapped. do right now? That adrenaline pumping, I so felt good. nothing. Yeah, Coke didn't feel that good. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Natural adrenaline, but like, it, I think it's embarrassment. Is that andre- adrenaline? Because you know how embarrassing. Like, you know, it's deep down, it's not gonna work out. <laughs> no, like, it, it's just gonna be like, oh, like I showed them. Practically, like thinking about it, like, what was I gonna do? Go to the train and then get how far before and they then, went and found you. The thing is, we were right by the train. I thought I was gonna make it, and even if, even if I made it to the train i did not have a phone i didn't have money how the fuck was i gonna get to my friend's house who lived on like the in the south bronx yeah how was i gonna get there from my part that would have taken like an hour i had like no shoes on (laughs) but if you think about it like who would know like why did you have to be in that situation you know because I was a whore no you weren't like it's funny i actually didn't send anything and she was like i don't believe you and I was like, no, like, I didn't even, like, she caught me before I even did anything. 
Yeah, and it's like no shade to like your mom, but like that disease is serious. Like when you have that extreme of thinking, like it's crazy. Yeah, and then you know she tried to go see God for a minute, and I, you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I relate to you and your mom a lot because I've been in both situations. Because I'm in that situation where you are with with my sister. Because she's acting the same way that I did, and I just I'm not even disgusted by it. I just feel guilty yeah for it because i'm like oh fuck like she saw what i did and now she thinks it's okay because she doesn't know any better or she does know better she's just taking advantage of but it also but. she's like kind of in an ignorant stage of life yeah. so hopefully that will change and i think it no will. i think it will too it just sucks yeah this is kind of the, the well her age is the time to like really fuck up and yeah but the thing is like i i am praying that my brother is like like I think he's okay. My stepmom and my dad are really calm people. <gasps> okay, we'll just keep <gasps> we'll keep going with the audio. Bye. Bye. <laughs> the audio. Um, I mean the video cut but off. Like, but like keep going. He's ten, right? Ever since that happened, he and it's been like four or five years. He does. He he'll bring it up. Like even as like yeah. a baby, he'll like he was like seven or six or seven, and he was like, "Remember when you jumped out of the car?" I was like, "Why do you remember that?" He's like, don't do that again, okay? And he says that a lot, especially when he was young, and it makes me so sad because I'm just like, damn, like, that's a memory you're gonna never, no, <laughs> you're, you're never so gonna right. forget. <laughs> no, but you're so right. Like my sister, like, I look back on like that age, and like, it's so hard not to want to take it back, and you regret it like so much. Like Cause nothing. Were you hurt. crying and screaming too? Like, yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure they remember that too. Like yeah, all like the throwing shit around the house, breaking <laughs> shit, like breaking things that my mom has owned her whole life, stuff that her mom owned, and me just being like a careless fourteen year old, being like, "Fuck, fuck your mom!" Like your mom's dead, and like breaking her mom's I shit. Punched you in the face. I would. I should have been punched in the face, but like my parents didn't hit me. My parents didn't abuse me. If anything, it was the other way around. And like I don't know where that anger came from, you know. You're I think it's just my now, mental though. health. Like, I just think I just have, like, a disorder that just, like, when I do, when I start to snowball like that, I literally, like, it sounds, like, so stupid for me to be, like, I lost control, but, like, I truly did. No, I, I believe you. Because when I say that, like, even when I would tell my parents that, they're like, how do, you, how do you act normal everywhere else but here? You lose it, especially when you're yeah. in an environment comfortable. you're comfortable in. Yeah. My mom would only, well, actually, my mom was kind of chaotic everywhere, but she would mainly do that in the house. Like yeah. that she would lose her shit and like destroy my room or break shit in the in the hallway and i was just like like i remember when i was like 15 the lot one of the last times i went to the mental hospital i tried to fucking burn my house down like i started burning shit in my backyard like my parents have like built themselves up like they bought that house like during the fucking mortgage crisis and like that house was way more expensive than it should have been it was a piece of shit house and like they've built it up millions of like not millions but like they've built it up a million percent mm-hmm and, like, I could have just taken that all away because I got mad because I didn't get my way. Like, that's how extreme I was. You slay. know? Not slay. No. It's slay. just crazy. What You're that slay now. I am slay now. And I'm doing so great now. But it's just, like, it's it's interesting to talk about it with you because you've you're, seen you're it. You're kind of getting on both the sides of the coin. Cause you, no, because you've seen it on the other side. And you don't seem like you hate your mom. You don't. Not anymore. I did, did for, like, a, a year, maybe. Or yeah. Two. But, you know, like, I don't think it was real hatred. I think it was just, like, un- like it was just, I think it was build up from, you know, I wasn't allowed to say anything back. So it was just build up of, like, never, like, being able to speak. Yeah. So it was just, like, so much, like, anger and, like, rage just just stuck in my chest. Yeah. Um, that, like, I thought was hate, but I never hated her. We have a minute 30 left. But she lit. We lit as fuck. I love you, mama. We lit. No, like, because, like, there's also, like, the other side of, like, I think it, you're fortunate to have COVID. And that's what you said last time, that you got to be close with your mom. Because let's say you turned 18 and COVID never happened. Oh, would you, yeah. You probably would have just moved out, done your thing, and maybe never mended that relationship with her. It, it's It could have gone three ways. It could have gone the COVID way where everything went great or it could have went we went to the government mandated therapy like we were supposed to and probably healed or it would have gone the wait like i see that as the second strongest possibility of um us not dealing with it and then me moving out (laughs) yeah 
But isn't it weird how time works like that? How life works like that? Thanks, COVID. No, like, <laughs> honestly, like, my sister hasn't handled COVID well at all. But COVID, like, saved my life. Because I was going to school. How old were you? I was 15 turning 16. Okay, so we were I was a junior? sophomore, sophomore Whoa, in high school. Shit. So COVID happened, and I was doing drugs really heavily at that point. Just like every every single before or during COVID? before before that, like for I started heavily doing. I was doing drugs in middle school, around eighth, late seventh to eighth grade. But I wasn't doing them like heavily. Like I would just do it at a party or like me and my friend hung out. Like we we'd share a jewel, Ooh. but like or we'd get drunk or we'd smoke weed. Like it wasn't like oh like mm, let me wake up and put some fucking whiskey in my coffee. Like it wasn't like to that point. And then tenth grade, it was starting to get to that point. And then COVID happened, and then my dealers couldn't come to me. Yep. I only had Nick. I only had cigarettes. I only had my vape and a little bit of weed left, so I didn't have shit. So, like, that kind of helped it for a couple of months. And then it's shit started opening back up again, and I uh, was friends with the wrong person at the wrong time my junior year of high school. Her brother was a Coke dealer. Then I, I was introduced to him, and then he introduced me to, like, fucking Quaaludes and Coke and, like, really heavy shit that i'd never even thought about it's not i don't even think of it as his fault like it was just wrong place he, wrong time he is also partially to blame i would say just because like he knew how old you were yeah but you know money's money like yeah. if i was a functioning addict and i was a dealer like i would be like mm, let me take advantage of this 16 year old let me take advantage of this person who has money and doesn't know how to spend it i knew motherfuckers who would deal to like middle schoolers and i was just like aren't you ashamed <laughs> <laughs> they're probably ashamed, no shame. but like money is money to them. They don't fucking care. And like at that point, like I'd met weed dealers. I had met people who would just pick up alcohol for me and like they weren't scary people. But the minute that it turned into that scene of people, like that's when my life went downhill like crazy is when I met those kinds of people. Because not only was I fucking up my life with drugs, but I was bringing people into my life that were extremely dangerous and tw- had 20 years o- on me. Oof. So like. I told you last time, like with yeah. that Coke dealer story where like you held a fucking gun to my head because I was short $5. I was, I was, a, I got sober a week after that because that's how scared it, it got me. But like, let's say I had enough money. I probably would have kept doing it and who knows what the fuck would have happened. Things happen for a reason. As annoying as that phrase is. It's no, really it does true. happen for a reason because I, the Coke that he sold me gave me a seizure. I almost overdosed a week after that and then i got sober and i was like i don't want to do this anymore i was just done and look at us now like i still mm, and i don't want to say like now that i'm sober my life is perfect it's i would say you're (coughs) you are beyond my expectations for someone who is fresh out of high school basically going into college there's a lot of people i've met here that i'm like you need to go back into the baby crib and shut the fuck up aiden sorry (laughs) Dog I love you, Aiden. Eating his I ass love right you, now. Aiden. He let me use his charger today, and I wanted to kiss him. I went. Mm, Is he on here? His little moly. Oh, In the flesh? No. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a moly. laughs> no, but I. Uh, I mean, I said I say this all the time, but it's because I am. I'm really proud of you, and I think you act a lot more mature and more respectful, and you are so much more organized than a lot of people I've met who are older than me or my age, because um, a lot of my friends are about to graduate college. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think, honestly, like, I respect you more than I respect them sometimes. Well, I respect you so because your work ethic is crazy. Stop it. And I think, like, goes for Trisha, too, over there. Like, Trisha and me are such great friends because, like, I admire the fuck out of her. And I admire the shit out of you. So, like, if we if two friends admire each other, like, you're pushing each other all the time. Yeah, and that's what I didn't have before I yeah. came here. I had friends who were just kind of, like, stagnant. Mm-hmm. Sorry, no offense, yeah, but there, it's it's <laughs> like it's not even offense taken. Not like, all of them, but like there were definitely a few that I was just like, yeah, you're kind of like just there, and I don't need. Yeah, like, like I, I could that like other people could be no in commitment. That space. There's yeah. no real commitment, like, and it goes to show like I- I'm not expecting lifelong friends after high school, but like when I'm friends with somebody, I'm truly committed. Like I would do anything for you or anything for Trisha, and like. Even after high school, like, nobody talks to me from high school. I don't talk to anybody from high school. because talked just, to, like, three people. I, ta- I talked to one girl who I thought, like, really meant something to me. And I don't even hear from her, from her anymore. Like, I have to actively reach out to her and be like, hey, how are you doing? Because I still truly care about her. 
people say life gets in the way, but it's also... It's not true, though. Like, think about how much fucking free time you have during the day. Still, as a busy college student. Like, you have some free time. And you're thinking about doing it sometimes. It's just, people don't do it. I think it's fine to have space from people. Like, I don't... There's this one girl that I don't talk to very... Like, honestly, I don't talk to her that much at all. But when I see her and, like, when we hang out... It's like we saw each other the day before, and that's what matters. Is to yeah. me, it's like no, that. That's true too. I don't want to generalize because that's, that's all true. I need. You know what I mean? Like I don't expect us to like at least, especially if we're both busy and you're like about to be a senior in college, and you're a med student. Like you know, do your thing. Do your thing. Um, twenty one. Sorry. Yo. Those well, ticket prices. Oh my god. What the Theo Vaughn? No fucking uh, twenty one and Drake. There. Oh no, that's <laughs> fucked up. I think it's my feet that stank, bro. No, you can't, because I know it's me now. Why? Because I got a whiff of it, because when I went like this before, and it went... I do that all the time. If my feet smell, I just tuck them right under my bum. You put it in your bum. (laughs) In my bum. All right, I think we're going to wrap it up. Yeah, fuck it. We're going to wrap it up. I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) Oh, you're sitting on that one. (laughs) Jesus. Trish, you look so pretty. I just want to say that. We love you, Trisha. Yeah. All right. But I'm going to leave your your credentials in the link in the description. This will be up on YouTube. I'm sorry that my fucking camera dies. I need a new SD card to have more time. Because I looked up the handbook on this shit, and it's like, this thing could run for 48 hours straight. Lies. Lies. Uh. (laughs) I'm sorry I didn't send you a video that the other day. No, it's okay. You asked me for it, and I forgot. Don't worry. I see you all the time. (laughs) I love you. Love you too. But you guys can check out my website at catwithsnessy.com. Um, Trish is going to have a website soon as well. She's working on it. Mm-hmm. But Her I'll space? leave. Weebly. <laughs> Weebly. Um, but I'll leave your art account. I'll leave your Instagram. But um, I will see you guys in two Tuesdays. Bye. Bye.